Have you ever found something on Google Earth that looked really good while you were just scouting before you headed to a lake and you wanted to put it on your hummingbirds? Well, this is the video for you. video we're going to talk about how to create a place mark on Google Earth and transfer that over as a waypoint onto your hummingbird graphs. I'm going to break down how this is done on both the Helix and the Solix units. It's pretty much the same but there are a few differences that uh, may come in handy. For this you're going to need um, to use Google Earth, GPS, Visualizer, and Hummingbird PC. I will put a link to Hummingbird PC and GPS visualizer in the video description below. We are going to get started with Google Earth opened. You will notice on the left side of the screen there is a tab called Places. Under this you will see all the place marks and the paths that you've created in the past. You can add a new folder to My Places by right clicking on My Places and selecting Add and then selecting Folder. As you can see on the left on my screen um, I typically add a folder for each lake and this kind of keeps it a little bit more organized so that I know which lakes are which and I don't have to see all the, the place markers at once. For this video we're going to use the Lake Eufaula folder. Um, I have a tournament coming up at Lake Eufaula and so I'm starting to do my map research on that. So we're going to go over and we're going to click on Eufaula folder. Once you click that little box Beside the folder, it will give you a check mark. When you select the box next to the folder name, it will make all the stuff in that folder visible on Google Earth. As you can see, there are already three place marks in there and ready to go. Usually before I show up to a new body of water, what I'll do is I'll go on Google Earth and I'll look around and find areas that look good and I'll mark these with a place mark on Google Earth and they'll go into that folder. The problem is when you get to the lake it's hard to remember exactly what you saw a week or two before. So what I like to do is I'll make a waypoint on my hummingbird graph. We're going to start from scratch and make a place mark. So when I'm going around the lake I'll look for anything that looks good whether it's laydowns, docks, rock piles, whatever it, it kind of depends on the lake, but whatever looks good and you want to mark, you can mark it on this Google Earth. So for instance, here I found some laydowns on this bank coming into this creek. So I'll mark that with laydowns. After that, I was able to find some trees on the tip of this island, and I thought it looked good, so I marked that as trees. Kind of just go around, mark a bunch of stuff as you can go or whatever. Mark whatever you want to that you want to move over to your depth finder. So in order to make a, a place mark on Google Earth, you will go up to the top left corner where it says add place mark. And then it'll drop a place mark in the center of your screen. You can drag that place mark over to... Looks good. Uh, so in this case, we're going to drag it over to this point with docs. After you get the place mark in the location you want it, you can then use the dialog box that pops up to name the place mark, whatever you want. So now let's say we're done marking all of our place marks for Lake Eufaula and ready to get them onto our hummingbird units. The next step is to right click on the Lake Eufaula folder and select Save Place As in the drop down menu and save the file somewhere that you can find it here in a little bit. Once your KML file is saved, we are ready to open up GPS Visualizer. And like I said earlier, there's a link in the video description to get to the GPS visualizer. When you get to the deep GPS visualizer screen, you will notice that there's a few drop-down menus. The ones that we're interested in for this case are input file format, output file format, and upload your GPS file here. For input file format, we're going to want to scroll in the drop-down menu and find the Google Earth Keyhole Markup Language selection. For the output file format, you're going to want to find the Garmin Map Source GDB. This may seem a little weird because we're doing this to Hummingbird units rather than Garmin, but you'll see later at where the Hummingbird PC will correct the GDB portion of it. Once you have the input and the output file format, we're going to click 
choose file and this is where you're going to need to find that KML file that you made a little bit ago. Select that and you'll notice that the file name shows up next to the choose file button once it is selected. So you convert the file by clicking convert the file button and this will bring you to a new screen that gives you a link to download your GDB file onto your computer. Usually when you click that link it'll just save to your downloads folder so that may be a good place to, to find it um, after it's saved. And now you're ready for uh, Humminbird PC. So open up Humminbird PC. If you don't already have it, there's a link in the video description below. Once Humminbird PC is open, you are ready to open up your GDB file in the software. In the top left corner, you will see the open folder button. So you want to click on that button and then find your GDB file that you generated from GPS Visualizer. Once you select this and open it, you'll probably get a pop-up saying that the GDB file is not supported and that Humminbird PC wants to convert it to a file type that it recognizes. So you can click yes and Humminbird PC will do all that for you. So now you should have a folder on the left side of your screen if you click the plus button to the left of the folder name and expand the folder, you will see where it says waypoints, routes, tracks, and groups. All of your Google Earth placements should be under the waypoints tab. And so when you click on that, your Google Earth placements should appear under the waypoints tab. As you can see, I have my four place marks that I made earlier in the video that are showing up on the right side of this Humminbird PC. We got it. Now we got to figure out how to get them onto our units. So first step will be um, powering on our graphs. And in this video, I'll, I'll do two separate ones, but I'll show you how to do a helix and how to do a uh, solix. So they're a little bit different, but they're, they're for the most part, they're pretty much the same. And a little trick I learned from Humminbird is to remove your any Lake Master cards or Navionics or anything like that because sometimes your unit will think that there's nav data on there and it'll cause it to not, not want to load your nav data the right way. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to encrypt the uh, SD card. And for that, you're going to want to use an SD card that's um, smaller than 16 gigabytes and the right size for fitting in your units. Um, a lot of times whenever you initially plug the SD card into the actual unit SD slot, it will um, encrypt it automatically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this into the slot and then it'll say SD card successfully encrypted. If for some reason it didn't automatically do it, you can press menu twice and go to the setup tab and then go all the way to the bottom and select encrypt SD card and then press over to the right to select that and it'll do the same thing. So if it doesn't automatically do it, that's the, that's the way to um, manually do it. But now we're ready to remove that SD card from the, the Helix unit and take it over to our computer Basically, we're going to just put the SD card in and it should pop up on this this guy right here showing that there's an SD card in there. We're going to make sure that this waypoints is selected and that's the four waypoints that we want. And while this is selected, go over here and click the green arrow and that'll be upload from PC to SD card. So we're going to click that. And we're going to click add or replace. doesn't matter for, for this situation because I don't have anything at all on the SD card. So we'll get, do add this time. And we'll do upload successful. We'll click OK. So now we're back at the graphs. And we got our SD card that's got the Humminbird waypoints on it. And we're just going to put it into our unit. And a lot of times it'll automatically do this for you. It'll ask if you want to upload nav data from SD card. Click yes. And it'll say it did four waypoints. We got our trees, docks on point, lay downs, and our other trees. So it successfully downloaded all four of our waypoints and we're good to go. So now that we got it on our Helix, I'm gonna show you how to do it on a Solix. And it's, it's pretty much the same process, but there's some different menu options that may be helpful to know. Like I said before, you wanna make sure that you have all Lake Master chips out. And right now, obviously there's a Lake Master chip in there. So we're gonna remove that. We're gonna take um, 
the same SD card. I, I formatted the SD card so there's nothing on it anymore. But we're gonna take the same SD card, we're gonna put it into the unit, and then it says SD card successfully encrypted. The steps in order to do this, if it, if it didn't automatically do that, press the home button, and then click here to see additional options. Go to files, and then in files you should have, right here you should have encrypt SD card number two, which I have it in SD card slot number two, so that is the correct SD card that we wanna do. So we're gonna click encrypt SD card, and it'll say successfully encrypted. So now at this point, we're ready to remove this and go get our waypoints on this card again. So we're back at the computer and these steps to, in order to put the waypoints back on the um, SD card are identical to the Helix, but we'll go through them again. Basically, we're gonna just put the SD card in. We're gonna make sure that this waypoints is selected. And while this is selected, go over here and click the green arrow and that'll be upload from PC to SD card. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna click add and we'll do upload successful. We'll click okay. We can unplug it. Now it's ready to go back over to our solar. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put my SD card in the slot and it should automatically ask if you want nav data to be uploaded. If not, then you're gonna wanna go to the home button again and find your files and go to import, there's import, export, or encrypt. And what, what you're gonna want is import nav data. And you're gonna select this file type. That's your file that you have on this SD card. So that's gonna import the data and it's gonna say it imported four waypoints. So those are the four waypoints that we wanted. And if you look, here they are. There's trees, docks on points, laydowns, and some more trees. This can be helpful when you're on a new body of water if you wanna do some research at home ahead of time and um, find little areas with, with good looking stuff, like whether it's laydowns or docks, just kinda of depends on the, the actual lakes that you're fishing. At least you can do some research ahead of time on, on new bodies of water that you've never been to. So, like I said, this can, this can be very helpful or it may not help you at all but at least you got a starting point where whenever you get to that that body of water that you can go off of hopefully it helps you guys um, be more efficient on the water and if you liked it please like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more tips and tricks like this in the future thanks for watching